Monique has been on Oprah's neck, exposing fresh evidence that proves Oprah took advantage of the King of Pop, Michael Jackson, and his family for ratings. Oprah Winfrey is back in the news for years because she feels Oprah has a habit of making friends and then taking advantage of them. Monique was especially enraged by Oprah's attempts to damage Michael Jackson's reputation due to claims that the court has repeatedly rejected. In addition, Oprah invited MJ's family, including his kids, to her show. Monique is not the only celebrity who feels that way about Oprah. A number of other actors and entertainers have also criticized Oprah for treating Michael Jackson disrespectfully during her show. So what did Oprah actually do to earn all of this attention? Did she truly take? advantage of Michael Jackson and his family. Let's talk about it. When your mother asks you in the first trial why you did what Anthony did and so many others had done, why did you deny it? It seemed like a great chance to say, yeah, some of the same things have happened to me, but I didn't testify. Wade Robson and James Safechuck, the subjects of the contentious documentary Leaving Neverland, filed lawsuits against Michael Jackson's estate in August of last year. The lawsuits were intended to expose their alleged essays. I was afraid of getting caught thinking that I was doing something good or knowing that what he did was bad. By Michael Jackson, this was the second time the lawsuits have been reopened after the courts had previously dismissed them. The claims state that Robson met MJ when he was five years old and that MJ dated him for seven years while Robson featured in three of MJ's music videos. Additionally, the lawsuits state that Chuck met MJ MJ would show him gifts when he was nine years old while he was filming a Pepsi commercial, and he would repeatedly essay him. The lawyer representing Pops Estate defended Michael's innocence, saying, We remain fully confident that Michael is innocent of these allegations, which are contrary to all credible evidence and independent corroboration, and which were only first reported. Made years after Michael's passing by men driven only by greed, this is where Monique steps in. According to Monique, the only reason Robson and Safechuck felt comfortable enough to sue Michael Jackson in spite of numerous court rejections was because Oprah validated their allegations by providing them with a platform for context in 2019. Oprah hosted an Oprah Winfrey Presents After Neverland program in which Robson, Chuck, and the director of Neverland talked about the effects of sexual assault on survival. This program caused controversy because many people thought Oprah was showing disrespect for Michael Jackson by hosting people who are obviously only interested in making money. However, Robson has changed his story on multiple occasions. In addition to the court's two dismissals of his case, Robson and Safechuck's prior under oath testimony that the say never occurred sent the FBI's over 10-year investigation into Michael Jackson that ended when they were unable to locate any evidence supporting the accusations in a podcast episode with while Michael Jackson has been dead for years himself. Monique and her husband, Monique, called out Oprah, saying that it was inappropriate for her to support his accusers. They also added that while Meiji was found not guilty, the authorities had been looking into him for years, which I found disturbing, and that he has been gone for more than 10 years. In my humble opinion, when a black man is accused of sexually abusing both white and African American children, there is a sense that something is going to happen to him. Not only has he disappeared, but he was also declared not guilty. People say, listen, we got to throw this out of here. So here's a man that was found not guilty when the man tries to file a lawsuit in 2014. However, there is no proof or evidence that this man has ever done anything to anyone legally. And you have to wait 10 years after this man's death to interview those who claim they lied. Take some calls. Baby, let the people tell us what they, according to Monique, the federal agents looking into a black man as other celebrities have also come out in favor of Michael Jackson, including Corey Feldman and Aaron Carter, who both knew the musician when they were children, Corey called the documentary. They did everything in their power to convict Jackson. So after 10 years of investigation and not being able to uncover anything, they gave up unbalanced, which is intriguing because Corey is one of the most outspoken celebrities in Hollywood about sexual assault allegations. The late Aaron Carter also stated that MJ's accusers were lying which is intriguing because he had previously chastised his own sister for harassing him. It just seems that these people would be more understanding of essay victims who have survived. Saying they didn't believe MJ's accusers likely indicates there wasn't any truth to it. Similarly, Home Alone star Momo Kulen, who has known MJ since childhood, claimed he never saw him act inappropriately, 
emphasizing that he would be the first to report anything if it did occur, hold nothing back, and I would definitely speak up if I had anything to say. But no, I never saw anything, and he never took any action. Next, Michael's biographer, Mike Smalls, exposed numerous contradictions in the documentary, such as the Safe Chuck's claim that Michael had yelled at him when he was 10 years old in the train station in Neverland. In 1988 and 1992, the train station was constructed, but Safachuk was only 16 at the time. Bill Whitfield, the former head of security for Michael Jackson, also questioned Robson and Safe Chuck's claims, stating that he knew they weren't telling the truth because some of the dates they mentioned just didn't add up. However, Oprah completely disregarded all of these errors and supported a documentary that the thing that startled fans the most about Oprah's actions, that she neglected to fact check, was that many thought Oprah owed Michael Jackson the initial success of her career because it was Jackson who popularized Oprah's talk show. To put this into perspective, in 1993, Michael Jackson reached out to Oprah for an interview because he wanted to finally, Michael Jackson wanted to interview Oprah. But the reason he chose her was because they both had relationships with Quincy Jones and Elizabeth Taylor. So MJ felt like he needed to let people in and set the record straight about the rumors surrounding his skin tone, career, and love life got the invitation. She was taken aback and starstruck. Oprah would later recall feeling as excited as a child when she went to MJ's Neverland Ranch for the interview on February 10, 1993. They discussed a wide range of topics, including MJ's difficult childhood plastic surgeries, rumors about him sleeping in a hyperbaric chamber, and life in general. If anyone could understand his position, it would be her. When it comes to MJ's romantic life as an artist, we're all familiar with the now viral segment of the interview where Oprah got incredibly personal. Have you ever been in love? She asked. Yes, with Brooke Shields, and yes, and another girl, and another girl. It's embarrassing for me to ask you this, but I'm, I'm going to ask you anyway. Are you a virgin? How could you ask me that? Just want to know. I want people to know that I'm a gentleman. You're a gentleman. I'm a gentleman. All right? So that means that you think that a lady is a lady. Therefore, that's something that's private. You can call me old school if you like, but that's very personal to me, so you won't answer it. I'm embarrassed that the interview went viral with over 62 million views, which at the time was the 20th largest audience for a when Michael began to face sexual assault allegations in the late 90s, early 2000s. Oprah distanced herself from the subject and refused to discuss it on a US TV program that ABC recorded. Oprah gushed about it being the most significant and exciting interview she had ever done as a host and that it advanced her career and contributed significantly to her success. Any opinion about it out of fear of criticism, she rationalized that she didn't have enough information to make a decision. But when the King of Pop unexpectedly passed away in 2009, Oprah's purported lack of knowledge didn't stop her from dedicating an entire episode to him, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The strange part of all that was that even though she claimed she wasn't friends with Michael Jackson and had only interviewed him, she took advantage of her close relationship with him to get access to his family. Knowing how much Michael Jackson tried to keep Tids out of the spotlight, she conducted their first ever interview for her show, which naturally included an interview with Oprah Jijiri, carried out with Michael Jackson's family sent her ratings skyrocketing and increased her popularity among viewers. Then, to everyone's utter surprise, Oprah changed sides and hosted a TV special following Neverland, which starred James Safechuck, Wade Robson, and director Dan Reed as Departing Neverland. This is where things get crazy, though. It's because the host posts about Michael Jackson's alleged victims asserted in her defense that the incident goes beyond Michael Jackson and that she wished to concentrate on the larger picture of abuse in Hollywood and the seduction involved. Her intentions appear honorable at first but it becomes clear that Oprah will stop at nothing to get the most compelling story possible. That Oprah's friend Harvey Weinstein, whom she refused to break off relations with even after it became known that he was a predator, is a prime example of someone who has had numerous opportunities to speak out against abusers in the industry, but has chosen not to do so because the alleged abusers were her friends or the story didn't seem compelling enough. During a podcast appearance, Oprah was criticized by Michael Jackson's family for her hypocrisy in pretending to care about victims of abuse. According to Taj Oprah, Oprah took advantage of the Jackson family for ratings under false pretenses. 
Michael Jackson's niece, Brandy Jackson, and his nephew, Todd Jackson, also brought attention to this. Under the guise of being an ally, Brandy continued, Oprah blessed the documentary and legitimized Robson and Safechuck's allegations before the public could form their opinion. Todd J. then said that if Oprah were concerned about exposing the pattern of Sayi in Hollywood, she wouldn't even wait to fact check the film before supporting it with her platform. Would begin with her friend Harvey Weinstein. When Oprah was questioned about the entire Harvey Weinstein scandal, she dodged the question by saying it was a watershed moment and that she was looking for the bright side and the rainbow in the whole thing. She also added, for some reason, that it would be a waste of the tear. There was no need for Oprah to try to change the subject from her predator friend and act as though she was on the receiving end of things. So it was inappropriate for her to make such statements about Harvey Weinstein. To start, it was not even her place to try to find a bright side when she was not one of the victims.